BBC Essex. Now, there's a new film based in Essex called Essex Space Bin, shot in 35mm. The film was actually shot across Chelmsford, Baddow, Springfield, Boreham, Basildon, Pitsy, Hadley Castle, Jaywick, Southend, Bradwell-on-Sea and the chapel at St Peter-on-the-Wall. Well, writer-directors David Hollinshead and Philip Thompson are both with me this afternoon. Great to see you guys. Great Hi. to be here. Cheers uh, for inviting us. Well, it's, it's lovely to see you. And it really, I, what I want to do, first of all, we're going to play you a little something from the film which will just give you an idea uh, of what it's all about and um, it's all a little strange try this for size heed my warning or the doe decahedron dolphins will pass through the stargate and materialize themselves in this room Buy yourself a thousand Ferrero Rochers. Stack them up and build another interdimensional portal in the comfort of your own home. It's all okay by me. Mum, every day I've tried to use this key and it won't work for me. I hope it will work for you. Thank you, my child. Maybe the time is now. Hogan, my guru, has a printout of Armored Ra's pyramid blueprints. I bid you good day, Lorraine. You're gonna witness the day when Babylon shall fall. That mm. is Essex Spaceman. Uh, David and Philip with me this afternoon. Uh, first of all, um, just give us an outline of the plot. What, what can we expect from Essex Spaceman? Well, um, it's, a, it's a Lorraine's quest to find a mythical stargate that's somewhere in Essex. Right. <laughs> <laughs> like you do. Sure. <laughs> Did, I mean, is it a spoiler to say, does, does this person find it? Uh, it definitely it's a is spoiler. a spoiler. Well, we're not going to tell you that. Okay, you fair enough. We'll have to watch out for it. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, we, we wanted to break um, comedy film conventional, uh, conventional by using non-actors. Yeah, so Lorraine, for example, the main actress who is from uh, Essex, her previous acting experience was a background role in Harry Potter as a hand which didn't actually make the final cut. But, and that's why we loved Lorraine, because she had actually no experience, which right. was great. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, but we had to back it up with um, brilliant actors like Jorg, and he, he was actually in a leading role in uh, Saving Private Ryan. So we, we found that the, that the foundation of non-actors wasn't good enough for film, so we had to kind of mm. bolster it with, with good acting to kind of make sure that people watched it to the end. Yeah, sure. Talking of, of film, that because that's exactly what you filmed on. You filmed yep. on 35mm. Now, of course, normally this is quite expensive stuff, so you can't mess about. You've re, a take has got to be a take. It, uh, I was actually quite surprised where you got this film from as well. We, yeah, well, we got the film from eBay, um, uh, from NASA, actually. NASA were just uh, doing a job lot on eBay for 10p a can. So we just <laughs> bought the whole lot up, and uh, we used that, yeah. Um, essentially, it was just like one take, and we'll use it, because we, we didn't have very much. Yeah, I mean... Um, L Lorraine, um, as you can kind of tell, sometimes had problems with big words. So um, it took us sometimes up to half an hour for her to say one long word. Yeah. Right. So it, it, it was a struggle <laughs> on the set constantly. But, I mean, we just had to use anything we got. Anything we shot, we just use it. Yeah. And then put it all together and make it into some narrative sense. It, no, no, it, well, we had an idea, but it kind of morphed over time, didn't yeah, it? Yeah, we had a script, and actually, we actually had over 105 iterations of the script as, <laughs> over the four years. So it did become quite obscure yeah, we by the end. a big lesson. Always make sure you have a solid script to work from to start with. Don't make it up as you go along. So if, if something, say you're shooting a scene, and all of a sudden something happens, and because, I mean, you've chosen so many locations there. Could you, did you have a little meeting afterwards saying, actually, now we've got that bit, we could stick that bit in, couldn't we? Because we've got a bit, good bit of location Essentially, there. it was kind of like that. It was kind right. of a piecemeal approach where we'd, we'd shoot a bit and go, oh, yeah, let's change the story completely now and we'll do a bit in Chelmsford Flyover, for example. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Ch Chelmsford, Chelmsford Flyover is actually one of our most nostalgic locations in the film. <laughs> Coming back from holiday, it was just fantastic. Oh, thank God the flyover's open. We can go over it. it was yeah. just a, oh. I mean, I used to <laughs> I used to pop my head out of the, the, the sunroof and just pretend I was flying. My, my dad had a Cosworth, yeah. so it was... 
I, I, we love the chance of flyover. <laughs> now, the, the, the locations I've talked about here, I mean, you really have been right across Essex yeah, for this. Really was, was that the plan initially then? Did yeah, you definitely, have a, definitely. You had a, a map with lots of little pins we in it? We just love Essex, and we just wanted to really show as much as possible. So we've got Jaywick, the, the Kelvedon, Top Secret Nuclear Bunker, South End on Sea, St. Peter on the Wall, as you say. Uh, I think Jaywick, Jaywick. For, for me, is really important because it, it gets bad mouth all of the time. Worst town uh, in Essex. We, we go we're... there a lot. The community atmosphere is absolutely brilliant. Yeah. We, I can't actually understand why it is the worst town in it's Essex. One of the best, well, we're actually not in Essex in Britain. Yeah. It's it's amazing. We were talking about this with the with the writer Charlie Flowers, who has written a, a short story which is based in Jaywick, and he he spent quite a lot of time in Jaywick, talk, you know, talking to residents and stuff. And I think one of the things is that uh, from a film point of view as well, it's it's very natural, isn't it? Oh, There's yeah. something about it. It's, yeah, definitely. You know, it's and I, I find that about Basildon as well. Yeah. Filming in Basildon yeah. is uh, you know there is. Um, the, a lot of the, the brutalist architecture and things like that, which yeah. is around, uh, you, you don't get that everywhere, do you? No, no, no. It, it's kind of like that 60s utopia aspect, yeah. you know, in parts of Essex, because Essex has always kind of been built up on, hasn't it, yeah. quite quickly. And mm. there are places like that in Essex. And that's why we chose, on the other hand, you know, the oldest chapel in the whole of England. You know, in, St. In, Peter on yeah. the Wall, Bradwell, yeah. Because What's it like opposite. filming in a chapel? Because, I mean, I suppose you've got quite a few rules and regulations. We didn't film inside. Well, we no. used to just use that as background. Yeah. Right, got you. Yeah. Because yeah. yeah, it's difficult, isn't it, to get... I mean, you've, you've got to get... Do you do any sort of what they call guerrilla shooting? Oh, yeah, yeah, it was all guerrilla. It was all guerrilla, wasn't it? It's, it's, <laughs> it's, it's, it's legal. It's, it's actually legal to, um, to film wherever you like, as long as it's kind of a small crew, basically two or three people. Yes. It's, it's only when you start getting the big vans and everything mm. in that it becomes a problem, you see, so... It's funny because you hear that certain major motion pictures. I think Paul Greengrass is is very famous for doing this. That when he's filming something, if he wants a big scene in the city, he'll just get his yeah. actors in the back of a van. Mm. He'll just yeah. throw them out into the street and then just get a handheld and just follow them around yeah, yeah. and get that as footage. It's perfectly and, legal. And that's legal, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, oh, it's, it's, yeah. It's, it's it's just literally the, the logistics of having about. Have you seen, have you seen like one of the big sets? You know, there'll be four or five great big lorries full of gear. Yeah, you know, and then there'll be mm. all of the caravans and everything it's just yeah, we don't have it was just me and david and the camera yeah. <laughs> i bet but your yeah, catering no. was good wasn't it <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Pack it actually, look, yeah. well no we actually ate good food lorraine specifically requested chicken and uh, coke most of the time right okay um so we we all we you know and uh, oh yeah on saturdays we had to get to a place where they sold lottery tickets before 7 p.m right okay <laughs> it's like riders <laughs> <laughs> fantastic uh, so this is a Horror comedy is that is that what the genre you're putting no, in? No, possibly it's more of a science fiction fantasy. Science fiction. There are aspects Black of comedy. horror in it. There are horror aspects. Yeah, there were some horror, horror moments I saw in the, in yeah, the trailer. I have to say, but... yeah, but not in a traditional sense of a slasher or anything like that. It's no. kind of just uh, sci-fi fantasy. Yeah, I, I suppose it's going back to that kind of that that derelict utopian aspect that is naturally dark that we've kind of tried to capture. So that protect and survive sort of BBC kind of bleak nuclear winter kind of thing. We actually did use that and we actually got permission from to use the BBC archives for that as well. Really? Yeah. yeah, That's interesting. So you could you could put that in as well. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um it's I I love this idea of filming on thirty five millimeter though and the way you got it's a story in itself, isn't it, getting hold of that film from NASA. (laughs) Ten P a can. Uh, Um but but of course there, there is I mean Film Puritans everywhere will be delighting in this, surely. And I know that uh, Troma Films have got involved with you as well now. Yes, yeah, so the Troma, we sent it around to quite a few uh, companies, and Troma got back to us, uh, Kaufman, um, who's uh, obviously a big 80s uh, film studio, Troma Studios. They came out with the Toxic Avenger, Class of Newcomb High, all those sort of 80s classics. Yeah. And he was just blown away, and he was like, I've got to put this film out. Um, sent us over a contract, and pretty much the next day we signed it, uh, yeah. sent it back, and Boom! Here we are. Yeah, don't don't forget as well. Troma gave birth to um, Trey Parker and Matt Stone, who are South Park creators, and yeah, also they, the Guardians exactly. of the they, Galaxy they really? writer oh, and right, director okay. as well. Yeah, so Fantastic. we're we're on we're on track yeah. for, for for being as big as them. Hopefully, yeah, I think Troma as well <laughs> were behind so many of those great VHS, oh, definitely. Yeah. You know, straight to VHS movies that we used to see. In fact, I used to get my my VHS videos from a garage. Remember that we could rent you could rent a, a video 
and, and Gary just started doing it so you could have like four gallons of four star and fist of fury you know <laughs> Do you remember that? It was, that was slightly yeah. before my time. Oh, right, because this was... You used to have to pay, I think it was about... You used to pay, like, 80 quid or something for membership. And then it was a fiver every time you rented a film. It was a lot yeah. of money. And we're talking about the uh, the, mid, the early 80s. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We're, 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 look, we're, video we're, we're, we're looking forward to being in the in the Tesco um, DVD bargain bucket. Yeah. You know, ne- next next to the, some of the best titles, like Hangover Part 2. Yeah, they're all <laughs> going to be in there, aren't and, they? And yeah. the Total Recall remake, you know. Beethoven 4. <laughs> exactly. I always find that with certain films that you know you get films that are pretty naff and there's always a sequel and there's a sequel to the sequel. Yeah, right. You know, yeah. <laughs> and it just becomes more obscure. Yes. I mean, I think by the third, I think that um, Phil and I would actually be committed. I think if we got to the third. Oh, so. <laughs> so this is going to be having a premiere on the big screen as well, isn't it? Yeah. Got Prince it. Charles, the 18th of February, eight o'clock. It's a double bill with uh, Tromeo and Juliet. Ah, brilliant. So um, get down to the Prince Charles in uh, Leicester Square if you can for that one. What a great cinema to play as oh, well. Oh, yeah, that's the, the old Oh, yeah, cinema. definitely. It's the, it's, yeah, I mean, it is the independent the cinema, isn't it, yeah. really? So, it's Tarantino's I mean, there, there is also the aspect about the music, I mean, following on from the from the VHS. Yeah, we've got the soundtrack by Cfax Acid Crew, the legendary Cfax Acid Crew from Chelmsford, who's, who's done a soundtrack which is just as mad as the film, which combines drum and bass with epic Hans Zimmer, it's just it's something so original and that just to uh, as a little byword that's getting released on the 1st of February as a cassette release fantastic cassette tape cassette yes. tape oh, only I haven't had a cassette in ages really? you know, with vinyl making a comeback maybe cassette will as well, well I reckon so I mean yeah. my friend just bought me a load of cassettes at uh, uh, work which was quite nice of her yeah but I mean, I th- I th- cassettes uh, cassettes are still quite good quality, you know. And most MP3s, they still, you know, cassettes are actually better quality. It's just that you have got the abstraction of having to kind of uh, go backwards and forwards and kind of have to rewind, and it's it's just a yeah. bit old school. It is old school, but there's something quite nice, it's isn't there, nice. about it's it? Just, it's the just warmth, feels... that analog warmth, which yeah. you can get with digital. Yeah, yeah. I always remember to rewind your tape before taking it back. Yeah, you exactly. That's on the videos. I never used to do it. I was a bit of a rebel. You, well, you, you were the one. Yeah. You were the one. You'd get <laughs> home and you're like, oh, I've, only got te- I've got two hours to watch Dirty Harry, and somebody <laughs> hasn't. And if you had a really slow video machine, it's taking ages to rewind it, didn't it? <laughs> That's that's part of the charm, you know. I think pe- people people that love that kind of thing will love our film. Pe- people that like that kind of instant YouTube YouTube popular culture, they they're gonna they're gonna be quite cold to the film. So right, well, we're naturally well, placed. Well, I'm really looking forward to seeing it because it's mm. as I say, it's making its premiere at the Prince Charles, and then it's coming out on. It's gonna be it's Blu-ray as well, isn't yeah, it? Blu-ray, yeah. Blu-ray, get DVD. in. Yeah, well, it's film. It's 35 mil. It's got to be on Blu ray. Perfect. So, people, here's a double whammy on this. Not only can you have um, a good laugh, and also if you enjoy a bit of sci fi, throw that in as well. But also, you can go location spotting on this because there's going to be loads of places that people know, isn't there? Uh, Yeah, definitely. Hundreds. Hundreds, loads. And what's the release date on the 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 DVD Blu ray? That's June. In June. So, will it be playing any other theatres apart from the Prince Charles? Do we? Know? Yeah, I mean, it's actually going to be played in in a lot of independent cinemas in America. Right. And um, one of them is going to be Quentin Tarantino's actual cinema. Um, and o- over here, um, we're still trying to work out where we're going to be going. We're going to be, be Comic Con. Yeah, in Comic Con, definitely. Big. Yeah, oh, brilliant. Oh, this is but, so exciting. Yeah, it is. And we, you know, we we kind of we we didn't think that it would you know kind of get this far, but it is because it's just so niche. Yeah. And original. Yeah. Well, yeah. I do wish you all the best with it, guys. Come back in and see us again. Have you got, have you yeah, got the project in the pipeline, by the uh, way? Yes, we have. We want to do a war film uh, based in Chelmsford, actually. Um, the, the Hoffman's factory, the Bull Bearings factory. Yeah. We want to do a uh, sort of like Chris Nolan's Dunkirk, but Chelmsford. Right. You can picture that. <laughs> so we're, just, we're getting funding for that. That we're we're not sure do. whether or not it would be a dark comedy or whether it would be serious, you know. But yeah. but the the, the um, this this boy's father dies during during one of the bomb attacks, right. um, and and he ends up flying the Essex flag um, across Germany, and he's kind of dubbed the Essex warrior. Right. So it's an interesting story already, Definitely. isn't it? Definitely, he's yeah. covering. Yeah. Well, I do wish you all the very best with Essex Space Bin. Cheers, Tony. Which is Thanks. being released. If you can get yourself down to the... What, what, what night's it playing at the Prince Charles? Saturday, Saturday night. night, 8 o'clock, 18th yes, of February. 18th of February. Space Bin. 18th of February. Best to get a ticket in advance on that one. because It's they selling do, out. It's selling out. Us, it will do, won't it? Especially with the double bill as well. Definitely. With trauma films. And it's yeah. Valentine's week as well. Cool. And, and, and anything Perfect. you need as well, check out EssexSpaceBin.com. 
Yes. Lovely. And I'll, I've just been tweeting out as well. You're on Twitter, aren't you? Essex Space yeah, yeah. too. Get all the latest on that as well. Great to meet you guys. Thank you Thank so you. much for Cheers, coming Tony. in. Cheers, Tony. And look forward to seeing it on, on Blu-ray and in 35 mil and being screened at a cinema near you soon. We'll keep you updated on where you'll be able to see it as well. It's BBC Essex. It's 3.32 and it's time for this. Tony Fisher's 3.30 Connection. This is BBC Essex.